Knights, the legendary warriors of the Middle Ages, whose deeds became famous all over the world. Traditionally, knights are described as noble warriors who faithfully serve the king, that not touch the defenseless and have high moral qualities. Unfortunately this was not quite the case, and today we will try to find out how the medieval knights really were. Enjoy watching. Knights are people granted an honorary title of knighthood by a head of state, including the pope or representative for service to the monarch, the church or the country, especially in a military capacity. The birth of knighthood originates after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, simultaneously with the formation of the barbarian kingdoms, when Christian influence began to increase throughout Europe. In the early medieval period any well-equipped horseman could be described as a knight, or miles in Latin. The first knights appeared during the reign of Charlemagne in the 8th century. As the Carolingian age progressed, the Franks were generally on the attack, and larger numbers of warriors took to their horses to ride with the emperor in his wide-ranging campaigns of conquest. At about this time the Franks increasingly remained on horseback to fight on the battlefield as true cavalry rather than mounted infantry, with the discovery of the stirrup, and would continue to do so for centuries afterwards. Although in some nations the knight returned to foot combat, in the 14th century, the association of the knight with mounted combat with a spear, and later a lance, remained a strong one. When the boy turned 15, he became a squire. In a religious ceremony, the new squire swore on a sword consecrated by a bishop or priest and attended to assign duties in his lord's household. During this time the squires continued training in combat and were allowed to own armor. Upon turning 21, the squire was eligible to be knighted. The older Carolingian ceremony of presenting a young man with weapons influenced the emergence of knighthood ceremony in which a noble would be ritually given weapons and declared to be a knight, usually amid some festivities. The new class of warriors became more powerful, and the kings, fearing their influence, began to appropriate all their possessions. The institution of knights was already well established by the 10th century. While the knight was essentially a title denoting a military office, the term could also be used for positions of higher nobility such as landholders. The higher nobles grant the vassals their portions of land in return for their loyalty, protection and service. The nobles also provided their knights with necessities, such as lodging, food, armor, weapons, horses and money. The knight generally held his lands by military tenure which was measured through military service that usually lasted 40 days a year. The military service was the quid pro quo for each knight's fee. Vassals and lords could maintain any number of knights, although knights with more military experience were those most sought after. Thus, all petty nobles intending to become prosperous knights needed a great deal of military experience. A knight fighting under another's banner was called a knight bachelor while a knight fighting under his own banner was a knight banneret. A knight had to be born of nobility, typically sons of knights or lords. In some cases commoners could also be knighted as a reward for extraordinary military service. Children of the nobility were cared for by noble foster mothers in castles until they reached age seven. Early notions of chivalry entailed loyalty to one's liege lord and bravery in battle, similar to the values of the heroic age. During the Middle Ages, this grew from simple military professionalism into a social code including the values of gentility, nobility, and treating others reasonably. Chivalry and religion were mutually influenced during the period of the Crusades. The early Crusades helped to clarify the moral code of chivalry as it related to religion. As a result, Christian armies began to devote their efforts to sacred purposes. As time passed, clergy instituted religious vows which required knights to use their weapons chiefly for the protection of the weak and defenseless, especially women and orphans, and of churches. However, the knights during the Crusades were not strong adhered to noble moral qualities. By killing Muslims in the East, they have earned a reputation as murderers, robbers and rapists. In the mid-12th century, the tide began to turn in the Crusades. The Islamic world had become more united under effective leaders such as Saladin. Dissension arose among Christian factions in and concerning the Holy Land. The Knights Templar were occasionally at odds with the two other Christian military orders, the Knights Hospitaller and the Teutonic Knights, and decades of internecine feuds weakened Christian positions, both politically and militarily. After many Crusades, the Knights' orders acquired a lot of wealth brought from the ravaged lands. After returning home, persecution, torture and murder of members of the order followed due to the French king's fear of a coup d'etat by the growing influence of the Crusader order. And with the advent of firearms, Knights have completely sunk into oblivion. And not to say that the Knights were clean, because wearing such armor, there can be no question of regular hygiene, in view of the difficulty of removing it from the body. There were of course exceptions, 
but for the most part during the wars, the knights did not really take care of themselves. And for religious reasons, people rarely washed before, which led to the appearance of the bubonic plague. In peacetime, knights often demonstrated their martial skills in tournaments, which usually took place on the grounds of a castle. Knights can parade their armor and banner to the whole court as the tournament commenced. Medieval tournaments were made up of martial sports called hastiludes, and were not only a major spectator sport but also played as a real combat simulation. It usually ended with many knights either injured or even killed. One contest was a free-for-all battle called a melee, where large groups of knights numbering hundreds assembled and fought one another, and the last knight standing was the winner. The most popular and romanticized contest for knights was the joust. In this competition, two knights charge each other with blunt wooden lances in an effort to break their lance on the opponent's head or body, or unhorse them completely. The loser in these tournaments had to turn his armor and horse over to the victor. The last day was filled with feasting, dancing and minstrel singing. Knights used a variety of weapons, including maces, axes and swords. Elements of the knightly armor included helmet, cuirass, gauntlet and shield. The sword was a weapon designed to be used solely in combat and was useless in hunting and impractical as a tool. Therefore, a sword was a status symbol among the knightly class. Swords were effective against lightly armored enemies meanwhile maces and warhammers were more effective against heavily armored ones. One of the primary elements of the armor of a knight was a shield. They used shields to block strikes and stop the missile attacks. Oval shields were used during the Dark Ages which were made of wooden boards and they were roughly half an inch thick. Towards the end of the 10th century, oval shields were lengthened to cover the left knee of the mounted warrior called the kite shield. They used shields called the heater shield during the 13th and the first half of the 14th century. Around 1350, square-like shields called bouch shields appeared which had a notch to place the couched lance. Early knights wore mail armor up until the mid-14th century as their main form of defense. Mail was extremely flexible and provided good protection against sword cuts but weak against blunt weapons such as the mace and piercing weapons such as the lance. Padded undergarment known as Akaton was worn to absorb shock damage and prevent chafing caused by mail. In hotter climates metal rings became too hot, so sleeveless surcoats were worn as a protection against the sun, and also to show their heraldic arms. This sort of coat also evolved to be tabar, waffenrocks and other garments with the arms of the wearer sewn into it. Knight's horses were also armored in later periods. Caparisons were the first form of medieval horse coverage and was used much like the circo. Other armors such as the facial armoring chanfron were made for horses. The ideals of chivalry were popularized in medieval literature, particularly the literary cycles known as the Matter of France. Relating to the legendary companions of Charlemagne and his men-at-arms, the Paladins, and the Matter of Britain, relating to the legend of King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. Knights should not also be considered romantics who are ready to give their lives for the sake of their woman, as it is usually described in novels. The real knights, unfortunately, were engaged in cattle theft, looting, rape and torture, and they didn't even think about human rights, not to mention some kind of courtliness. Captured servants, wives or children of an enemy horseman, if he did not have formidable allies, the knights could easily simply be sold into slavery to the Saracens, or give it to your overlord. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Write in the comments your ideas for the next video. Subscribe, and see you later. Goodbye.